Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, grumpy bookstore owner. Suppose we're given two arrays that look like this and the first array represents customers. So we want to sort of maximize the values in this array. I won't go too much into the context of the problem like minutes and all that stuff because it isn't really relevant. It's more about there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the first array customers and the second array grumpy. The idea is that if grumpy is zero, that means that the owner is not grumpy. Therefore, the customers here will get the full satisfaction one. Here, the owner is grumpy. So this actually is going to be a zero. Now it's already a zero, but it makes more sense if you look here where the owner is also grumpy. Even though there's a two here, we can't really use that. It's pretty much a zero as far as we're concerned. So if you think of it that way, just given this array, we're kind of turning this into a zero, this into a zero, and the value over here into a zero. Now, if you take all of these up and compute the sum, we're gonna get one plus one plus one plus seven. I think that's 10. Now we want to maximize this score. So what can we actually do about it? Well, that's where the third parameter comes in, it's minutes. In this example, it's three. So what that means is we can pick any block of three, any continuous block of three elements and basically turn the grumpiness to zero for all of those values. Now, if we do that, the only reason would be because then we get the original values from the first array. So instead of this being a zero, it would actually be a two and this would be a one. And if you take our original result 10 plus whatever we gained by, you know, flipping these, we're going to get this as the result. Now we're trying to find the window that will allow us to maximize the result. And for this particular problem, it's over here because we're gonna get the plus one and we're gonna get the plus five. So that's gonna leave us with a result of 16. That is the output for this problem. Now, the brute force would be an N times M solution where M literally is this parameter and N is the length of the array. Can you think of that brute force solution? Well, I kind of just showed you one example of it, but think about every possible position this window could be in. It could be over here, it could be over here, and every position pretty much, right? So for any given spot like this one, we want to compute for only the positions where grumpy is a one, we want to compute the sum of these values because these are the ones we're allowed to flip back. So in this window, we'd say that it's a three. For the next window here, we'd say that it's actually just a one because this one's already zero, this one's already zero. This one is a one, we flip that and we get the one back from here. So pretty much every single window is gonna have some score assigned to it. We obviously want to maximize the result. The result is the original array, like after turning them into zeros. So that was 10 plus the max window that we can get. And the max window in our case is gonna be a six. So that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna look at every single window and compute whatever score we could get from that. Now, if you're thinking, how is this a brute force solution? You might already know the technique I'm about to show you, which is called the sliding window. This is a very textbook sliding window problem. I actually have a pretty good lesson on it in my advanced algorithms course. It's called the sliding fixed window where the size of the window is fixed. There's also a variable size, which we're not really gonna get into, but you can see we talk all about that here. So with the sliding window, the idea is that we don't have to go through the window every single time. We don't have to go through these values and recompute that. And then when we're over here, go through the same values again, because when we take our window from here and then move it to the next position over here, all we have to do every time we shift the window, we just add a value here and remove a value here. So whatever our score was with these three values, we're gonna now compute the score with the next value after removing this one. That's pretty much the idea. Now let's go ahead and code this up with this sliding window optimization. It's just gonna be an O of N time solution where N is the size of the input and constant space because we're not really using any other data structures. So let's code it up. So while I feel that conceptually this problem isn't too bad, I think coding it up 
has a few areas that can be confusing. So the idea is we're gonna have the sliding window. We're gonna have our left pointer. I'm initially gonna set it to zero. Then we're gonna have the right pointer going through the length of the input array. Now we want to know the score of the window, right? Like when I say score, I mean how much we could get from the current window if we flipped everything in that window to a grumpy score of zero. So that's why I'm not saying all of that every single time because it's a lot to say and it kind of just makes the explanation more confusing. In terms of code, it's pretty simple. If grumpy at the current index R is a one, then we're gonna take whatever value is at the same index in customers and we're gonna add that to the current window. Now, I also want to keep track of how many are satisfied. And what I mean by that is I want to sum up all the satisfaction scores where grumpy happens to be zero. So where it's not set. So I can actually put this in an else condition and then I can say this, add to satisfied the value of the customer at that index because this satisfaction score is like the base score that I was talking about earlier. In the example, it was 10. And that's because this is how much satisfaction we have without changing anything at all. So that's like the base. And we have our current window. There's one last variable I'm gonna have, and I'm gonna show that to you in a second. But first, let's check. What if our window becomes too big? because we have to remove characters from the left side. So the length of the window can be calculated like this, R minus L plus one. That's how many values are in the range from R to L inclusive. And so basically if this is greater than the third parameter minutes, we want to do something. We're gonna say, remove from the window the value at the left pointer and then increment the left pointer. But we're only removing a value from the window if we added it to the window. So make sure you have this condition here. If grumpy at index left is one, only then do we wanna remove because only then did we actually add that value to the window. So this is just some bookkeeping to make sure we don't get any errors and everything stays consistent with our window. And now lastly, I'm gonna have a, another variable up here. I'm gonna call it the max window because we wanna keep track of the current window and also the max. And you could probably do it with less variables, but I want to make this mostly readable. So max window is just gonna keep track of what is the max window that we saw. Pretty straightforward. At the end, you probably can guess the calculation. Look at the variables I wrote out. What is the return value going to be? Based on the drawing explanation, you should be able to figure it out. It's gonna be satisfied, like the base score, plus the max window. It could be zero, it could be some other value, doesn't matter. We just wanna return the sum of these two values. And as you can see on the left, we are bigger than everybody else. If you found this helpful, check out Neatco.io for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.